Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome to all our Epic Conquerors. Thank you for joining Mama J and myself, Chad, on the Epic Conquerors podcast, where everything is possible in Christ. Ooh, I love that. So Mama J, today we are doing part four of four in our series, Falling Hard After God, which has been an amazing series, as all of them are. But I just love the way this is, it just shows different role models and how they followed so hard after God. And, you know, it just gives us a blueprint, which we're so fortunate to have, which they never have, of exactly how this goes. And the beautiful thing is what the end result is. Yeah. It's like, we always want to read the book, you know, find out, well, how does this all end? Well, yeah. it ends really well when you follow hard after God. <laughs> yes. At the end, it's going to be good. <laughs> we read the time. back of the book and we win. Yeah. It takes some time. That's but... right. It usually does. Yes. <laughs> yes. There is a process, but we love the journey. If we understand it a little bit, it helps us a lot to be able to get through it. But today we're going to talk about Noah and how oh, his wow. life can impact us. And that, that story is pretty phenomenal because he was required to do something that he didn't even know what that something was. I mean, God told him it's going to rain. It's like, what's that? That ne- never rained. So had no experience with that. And then in the meantime, why don't you build a boat? And he's like, what's a boat? <laughs> so, well, I think that's I think that's a part that's overlooked by most people that don't actually study the word is that he never even knew what rain was. Like you yeah. don't. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'd never seen a boat. Yeah. Boat it never rained. So there's no need. <laughs> whatever. And, and you can only walk so far or whatever. So it's not like you could go to the seashore or whatever if you're not living nearby. I mean, it's just that's not even something you're aware of. So what do you need a boat for? I, and I saw I saw an ad on t- uh, just the other day on TV about uh, about the ark where they where they actually have the ark and they showed it to you. And yes, you know, I want to go there. I want to go. I mean, but it was what was amazing was when I looked and I saw, you know, how massive the ark was, yeah. right? And to think that he has this man Noah, you know, back then building this ark. Wow. Yeah. Well, there's a church in Santa Ana. It was used to be called the Crystal Cathedral. Oh, uh, yeah. Robert Schuler built it, and it's built to the dimensions of the ark. Oh, wow. <clears throat> but when you go and you stand by the building and you look at it, you totally get a revelation of what a massive project that was. For a guy armed with the tools that he would have had to create and make, I mean, yeah. you know, out of whatever he had to make it with, who knows? Uh, talk about the inventiveness of people in those days compared to today. You can go to the um, lumber store or like a, a, what do you call it, Home Depot or Lowe's or somebody like that. You want a hammer, and there's like a hundred different kinds of hammers you could have. But back yeah. there, when he's going to do this, he's got to build his own everything. And I, and, I, and I often just think about, you know, how his community must have just ridiculed him. Oh. And there's this man building this ark, and they're just like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm building an ark. And they're like, what's an ark? Yeah, well, he says, it's going to rain. And they're like, what's rain? You what's idiot, rain? you know? <laughs> yeah. And this wasn't like, it wasn't something Are you on drugs? Are you delusional? <laughs> It didn't take place over a period of like, you know, five or six or seven years, right? I can't remember exactly. Yeah. It took a long time to build the ark. So this was like an ongoing thing that he was living every day when people yeah. would probably walking past going, look at crazy Noah. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Every day relentlessly, the scripture tells us that that is what happened. But those that study these things and can figure out the age of things and so on, they figure there's a space range of 55 to 75 years it took him to build that day after day whether he felt like it or didn't i mean pick up that hammer and keep on going wow. and that's a long time to even yourself question your sanity uh, in the midst of something like that i think because remember too noah didn't have the holy spirit like we do it within us to give us that unction he just had to go by sheer faith and what the lord had drop in his heart to do and so today we're so blessed we have the holy spirit that can give us the heads up every day to encourage us and all of that he just had to carry on 
Yeah, I think that's it's something that we take for granted. Just thinking about that is, yeah, today we have the word in so many different versions. We have the Holy Spirit that speaks to us every single day. We're at church all the time. We have friends and family constantly speaking. He has one man, Noah, that just heard from God and was told for 75 years or whatever you need to build this ark. Well, and to set the stage even further, Chad, this was a time where God was so fed up with humanity because they were so wicked and evil and serving every other kind of thing except for God that he had just had his fill and he had decided he was going to destroy mankind. But because of Noah being righteous and sticking with God and having a heart after God, God said, all right, I'm going to give you a download here to build an ark and I'll save you and the seven in your family because you are righteous before me. And so I'll do that. So, well, yay. Okay. But now he's got to do the 55 to 75 years living in the midst of that kind of evil environment, knowing that if he doesn't build this ark, God's going to destroy mankind and he's going to also be destroyed. So he really has, uh, a reason to push through. <laughs> I mean, he has a reason, but I'm still thinking I saw how difficult that was, right? Yeah. Because you no, know, like you wake up and you you feel that like God told you that, and you're like, oh. But then after ten years, you start to you know get off the plumb line. To yeah. Use yeah. yeah. No, it was no, it was like persistent, dedicated, day and, in and day out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so this is like it's such a testimony to Noah's character and just how um yeah and in the meantime the people were marrying and having orgies and having parties and doing all this nonsense and just being horrible and just leaving the things of god the what they knew uh, from their um history of the one true god and they left all of that just to go party and do their thing so all that's going on and yet in the midst of all of that revelry uh, Noah's steady and consistent, staying true to God and picking up that hammer and building this ark. So what a testament for all of us who we get a, a download from God or he has a word that he speaks to us through prophecy or in our own spirit or through reading the scripture, a job for us or something to do. But how persistent and consistent will we be? Um, and will we even take that first initial step? I just talking to someone a few weeks ago. He's like waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting on God to fulfill, quote unquote, the vision that he has, he feels from God. So I said, well, what are you doing in the meantime to prepare for it? And he's not doing anything. I'm like, man, start speaking the word. Get on Facebook and do a live or something. Get the word out. Start doing something. You're just sitting there. And I just think in the Christian community, a lot of times we just think, you know, God needs to wave his little magic wand. And God's like, no, I want you to build the foundation upon which then this thing can catapult from. So yeah, we've got to be busy with it. And God always requires us to take action, right? I mean, we've seen so right through all of them. And one of them that really comes to mind for me is, you know, when God, when Jesus feeds the 5,000, which yeah. is obviously more than 5,000, you know, he gets the, the loaves of bread and the fish. I mean, it's not like he took it and he prayed over it and it didn't just go, Bish! And there was all the there was the miracle, and then they could take the fish and hand it out. He prayed over it, and then he just handed it to the disciples. Yeah, as he began but, breaking it, it just kept more to break, more to break. Go feed them, and they probably went, "Well, what's going to happen?" Yeah. <laughs> but as they did, the miracle yeah. started to manifest. And, yeah. that's, and, and they think, they say there was five thousand men, so plus women and children. So we're talking about twenty thousand people, probably at a minimum, with this one kid per couple. Yeah. You know that's. A massive crowd, like you said, to just keep by faith breaking off bread and fish parts, you know, to give everybody something. Yeah. So, so for, us, for us and AP Conquers, it's just, you know, you take heed in that, that if God's spoken something into your life and, or you've, you know, prophecy or something, whatever it is, don't just sit around waiting for the first step to take place. Once you check in with God and it's something that you feel in the unction inside you, you need to take that step. You need That's to step right. out. Start preparing. Yeah. You got to put that preparation in place because as a part of preparing, you're doing that by faith because you don't see the end result yet. And that's what really stretches and grows your faith and uh, your relationship with God as well. So Noah's 
a posture of being righteous before God and pursuing hard and following hard after God, like what this little series is about, can make a difference for yourself and your family and your nation, actually, because then from them, then the rest of the population begin to come forward again. So, and Chad, he was 600 years old at this time. So we're all under age. There is no excuses. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy when you think about that. 600 years old, he was out there doing that. But yeah. God, how many more years? Like yeah. Me. yeah, he lived a long time. So, you know, it's just amazing. But Second Peter 2.9 says, The Lord knows how to deliver godly men and women from trials. So epic conquerors, God knows how to deliver you from the situation that you're in. He just requires from you, will you still be obedient to do what I've commissioned you to do? And there's so many things that if you don't have like a specific calling that you know, we've all been called to love others, to bless others, to share the love of Christ with others, to share the gospel, to minister to others, to be kind to one another. There's just so many things that we're supposed to be doing uh, that you don't need to have like this specific build a boat vision. Maybe you do have one, then prepare what you need to do. But even if you don't feel like you have been downloaded some specific task, there's hundreds of tasks already told us to do. Be busy with that as mm -hmm. unto the Lord, and God will order your steps to whatever he's got. And as you do those tasks, God will probably give you that next step and you'll walk into it. Yeah. Now, yeah. it says, in Genesis uh, 6, 9, it says, this is where it says, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Yeah. And that shows that just shows, you know, he was a righteous man. So that's key as well. We've got to look at yeah. righteousness. Yeah. Know, righteous means right standing with. So in other words, he had one heart with God. He and God were of the same heart, and he had, his heart was after God's heart. Read that again, Chad, because that's a powerful verse. And what the reference was, Genesis what? It's uh, Genesis 6, 9. And it says, this is an account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. So he wasn't part of the chaos that's and the world. Right. And he walked faithfully with mm. God. Mm. To be faithful means you're full of faith. Because you can't be faithful unless you do it by faith, right? So people say, oh, I want to increase my faith. Well, then be faithful, because if you're faithful and consistent to something, your faith will increase. And so faithful people are full of faith. Second Peter 2 Peter 2.5 says, but God protected Noah and seven others because he was a preacher of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of everybody mocking him and making fun of him, he kept trying to say to them, but God served the one true God. So he kept speaking out the word of the Lord that he had in his heart in those days. So I think that's also a, a lesson for all of us epic conquerors in the midst of our trials that are difficult and our painful seasons that we walk through and different losses that we go through and even the loss of a loved one or what have you, even in the midst of those hard times, let's keep being faithful and consistent to not only follow hard after God, but be a dispenser of God's love to others even through your pain, because that's how you're actually going to come out of your pain, just by helping someone else. And then God boomerangs that back to you, and he blesses and comforts you. So you just can't lose if you keep being faithfully consistent. I think one of the takeaways for me out of the story of Noah is, as well is the reality of, ju of judgment. I think mm -hmm. sometimes we Ooh, forget. That. That's good. You know, we don't, we like, we just, you know, obviously we go through life, we don't realize it, but there is a reality because, you know, Noah reminds us that that God is a God of justice, mm -hmm. okay, and that sin and wickedness will not go unpunished. That's right, and it will catch up with us. So. About, you might get, we might, you know, you might get away with it for a while, or the nation might get away from it for a long period of time, but at some point, God will say enough is enough. Well, yeah, because look at here, Noah was building this for 55 to 75 years while all the wickedness still was being, quote unquote, allowed to continue. Yep. And uh, so even in the world we're living in today, we're like, Lord, how long until you come and deliver us, you know? And But that's for us to pursue God hard and passionately after him in the meantime, so that we are in place to be delivered when the judgment does fall, because at some point God has enough. 
<laughs> and that's it, and it's lights out. <laughs> so, and at some point, it goes, okay, that's it, man. <laughs> yeah. I gave you away so many chances, and you refused I, them all. Yeah. You know, Mom Jay, that just brings, like, when you were saying that, I just, that, that, uh, the verse that like, just stirred up in me where it says, you know, when, when, when my, when my nation cries out to me, when my people cry out to me, yes. I will heal, hear, hear their cries. Yeah. And, Come down and heal their lands. Second Chronicles, yeah. So that's so that's something I feel like. He I says, thought, "If my people will humble yeah. themselves, yeah, and do what you said, go for it, yeah. Chad." To me, that feels like that's that like the where we are right now in our generation. That is like that to me is the cry. Is like until we cry out to God and say, "Please come down and heal our lands," or come back into our lives and stop pushing him out, these things are going to continue to get a little crazy. Yeah. So. And, and sometimes we feel like, well, you know, that's everybody else's problem. I've got my life insurance policy. I've asked Jesus to be my uh, savior and all of that. But then the question is, is he your Lord? Because if he's your Lord and uh, not just your fire insurance policy, then it's required of us to stand in the gap on behalf of those that are in danger of uh, eternal damnation. Uh, we just should never want anyone to experience hell because that was not created for us. It was created for the devil and his angels. And God is not willing that any should perish. But on the other hand, <clears throat> it behooves us who know Christ and are righteous with him to keep sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, even while we're in that 55 to 75 year period, perhaps, of building this ark. Don't keep your mouth shut and just say, well, if they want to sin, let them go sin. No, just keep putting out the word so they can't stand before God and say, nobody told me. <laughs> but no, you heard it many times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what he calls us to do, right? He calls yeah. us to go into the world. So that's his commandment. And yeah, that's and that's one of the things that I love about CAM, Kingdom Advancement Ministries, as I'm celebrating right now the 44th year anniversary of that ministry is that we learn how to share our faith in a way that we can minister to others and keep giving them that opportunity to choose Jesus and get filled with the spirit and to be disciples so they can grow in God. And it's such a powerful ministry for every believer. And if you don't know how to do those things, or you're not really comfortable in doing those things, go to judybauer.tv and uh, check that out. There's a group called impact changing lives, and you can get all the tools and resources, library courses, videos that you need to teach you how to be effective like Noah, to keep sharing the good news of the gospel while we're going through this season uh, as we're building the ark, if you will, on many levels, uh, to let the world know judgment is coming. Rain is coming. You might not know what judgment really feels like, but it is coming. We're building you an ark. We're giving you the gospel of Jesus Christ so that you can safely move into heaven as your eternal destination uh, when that judgment time comes. And Mama Jay, it's like, you know, if you do any sport or you do any other activity, you need to learn, you know, the tools. You need to understand how to play the game. Yeah. You need to practice. So it's the same It's the same as sharing your faith, That's right? right? That's you right. Have, most people don't have the confidence to share their faith because they haven't taken the time to learn how to do it in a conversational way. And that's a good yeah. thing about it, right? Yeah. It's a conversation. It's not running around with your Bible beating people over the head. That's right. Uh, Just do it day as you go to coffee or as you're hanging out playing basketball whatever you just have this conversation and it's like oh that sounds interesting tell me more yeah yeah that's it yeah that's it well, that's beautiful wow it's already now time i tell you this little series has been so good it's fired me up to follow even more harder after god if that's possible <laughs> <laughs> i guess anything's yeah. possible but yeah it's pretty hard off to go <laughs> Anyway, so the spiritual weapon that we would have to spotlight for this particular podcast, what would yours be? Mine's going to be obedience. Oh, good one. Because obedience is such an important thing. I mean, look at that. Noah got told to build an ark in a desert with no rain, and he was obedient to the word of God, and that changed the lives of his family, and thankfully, we're here because of it. Exactly, yeah, because where would we be if he'd also gone? Then mankind would have been done. That's it. So I'm not <laughs> I would have been like, okay, I'm done with you people. <laughs> Woo. I think my spiritual weapon would go along with that, and it's persistency. Be oh. persistently obedient. You know, don't just try it once off. You know, well, let me try it for a week. 
Let's be persistent in our obedience, even if it's 75 years of obedience to something that you never see the fruit of it. That's not what matters. What matters is your faith to keep hearing and obeying. The results are God's part. And however he decides to do that, then that's it. I mean, I had a precious friend that just passed away uh, a few days ago, two and a half years. He battled uh, brain cancer and they told him he'd only live two months. And he lived two and a half years and every day and all day long, he would just say, I'm healed in Jesus name. I'm healed in Jesus name. And post things about it on Facebook, encourage so many people with his post because they knew he was fighting for his life. And in his sleep, he just peacefully went to be with Jesus a few days ago. And there's his ultimate victory. He's totally healed and whole and well. And in the meantime, God gave him the grace to minister the word of God uh, through that trial. So, you know, we the results of our faith walk is not ours to determine. That's God's part. Ours is to be persistently obedient and use those spiritual weapons that we're just spotlighting today. Uh, keep on keeping on, as I say. And if you and if you're falling hard after God, you're always going to get your healing. Yeah, you not get it right here on earth, but you will get it eventually. That's right. It's going to be an instant manifestation when you take boom. that last breath here and the first breath over there. Boom! You are totally in your glorified body, dancing around on streets of gold in the presence of Jesus. Oh, this doesn't get any gooder than that. <laughs> and uh, now we have our power affirmation. And uh, we decided to do, I am obedient and faithful to the calling of God. Oh, that is a declaration, Chad, that is so important. Wow. That is powerful. Yeah. So we're going to do our drum roll. We're going to count to three, and then we're going to shout it out and let the devil hear it. <laughs> Say, I am obedient and faithful to the calling of God. Neener, neener, neener. You know, it's like, I am going to do this. Yeah, because he's a loser. All right, here we go, everybody. Epic Conquerors drum roll. One, two, three. I am obedient and faithful to the calling of God. Yes, I am. And yes, you are, Epic Conquerors. That's why we're epic. Everything's possible, Everything's possible in Christ. How would you wrap up this four-part series, Chad, on these four characters uh, as we conclude this podcast? I think the one thing that really, as you were saying it, when I said obedience and you said persistence, right? Perseverance. Yeah. Because that is, that's the glue that puts it all together. Oh. You, can have, you can have faith for one day. You can have faith for one week, whatever. Or you can have, be obedient for that. But the reality is if you truly want to see the miracles of God in your life and you want to walk that thing, you have to have the persistence to go through it all. Because we can get right up and be faithful today, you know, or psyched up or whatever it is. But do you have the persistence to walk the journey through the valleys and the hills and all the rest of it? Yeah. So to me, that's and, powerful. Yeah. And these four characters all had that. And that was a character, yeah. that was part of their character. Yeah. And that's why they that's why we basically highlighted it today. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Whew, I love it so much. God is so good to us, Chad. I tell you, he's He's so faithful. He's a good heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And epic conqueror, whatever you're walking through today, just know that in the spite of anything that might be hard to walk through, you're still epic because everything's possible in yeah. Christ. And just put that in the devil's face and then just keep on going. Amen. Man. And I think what it is as well, Mama Jack, and encourage every one of our epic conquerors is to is to find someone that's walked through it for a long yeah. period of time. Like I was blessed to have the Lord put you in my life so that you can see someone that's walked through these, you know, these challenges and that for a long period of time and still faithful that can guide you and help you get through it so that you don't lose your way. So we love to have you here. Mama Jay has tons of resources and books and everything else. And we're always here for you or find someone in your community because you need that. Yeah. And at the very minimal, share the podcast with somebody. Let, let them get started on hearing the things that we talk about because you, you really don't know what other people are going through. You might have an idea or an inclination about it, but you really don't know the depth of their pain or sorrow or whatever it is they're facing, but God does. And these messages might just be the answer they've been praying for. And you had no clue, but as you shared it, then God answered their heart's cry. So, yeah, it's a good thing. Beautiful. Yep. 
All right, Epic Conquers. Ah, so sad we come to the end of this beautiful series, man. Those four episodes went by like that, like a flash. We might have to continue and have part two of another one. Who knows what comes next? But anyway, we'll figure it out. The Lord will guide us. But for now, we're going to say ciao, and then we'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye-bye, everybody. Ciao.